Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Max Shapiro, and I'm a developer advocate here at IBM. And today I'll be your host for this live hands-on workshop. And as you all can see, I'm wearing a NASA shirt uh, today because today is the 53rd anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing with Neil Armstrong. And that day was a giant leap forward with pushing the limits of what we can do with technology. And technology is always advancing, and especially today in the modern era. And one way that has advanced recently is with the Flexera and IBM Turbonomic integration. And with this integration, both Flexera and IBM Turbonomic work together to optimize license and resource investments and automate license compliance. And I am joined here today by Tim Ferguson from Flexera, as well as Robert Clark and Anshuman Biswas from IBM Turbonomic, who will introduce us to Flexera and IBM Turbonomic and dive into how they both work together. And a couple things before we get started. Uh, first is uh, use the chat or ask a question button below to ask questions uh, you have and we'll answer some as we go along. And the rest will leave till the end for a Q&A session. And also, this live workshop is being recorded, and the replay will be available at this same Crowdcast link and on YouTube. So with that, I want to hand off to Tim to introduce us to Flexera and Flexera One. Thanks, Max. So uh, if we go to our slide deck, we can uh, start. Uh, Thank you. Uh, we can start looking at a, an overview of Flexera 1 and what Flexera 1 can do for you. And uh, we'll look more specifically in how Flexera 1 does integrate with uh, Turbonomic and uh, specifically the, the aspect of Flexera 1 that, that does that integration. So just to start out with Flexera 1, we'll, we'll go through an overview of what Flexera 1 is about. And so with your software assets and within your organization, <clears throat> there's some key things that you want to know about your IT. What is it? Where is it? How is it being used? And how big is it? So what is it? Well, you might have on-premises software, on-premises IT infrastructure. Your infrastructure could be platform as a service. It could be infrastructure as a service. You might be dealing with bring your own license uh, you uh, have uh, license entitlements that you're managing, contracts, and so forth. So there's the what is it. Then there's where do you find it. Typically, you'll have uh, some kind of public cloud, maybe Google, maybe Azure, maybe AWS. You'll have uh, likely have uh, virtualization in your on-premises private data centers. You may be uh, moving to uh, containerization of your assets. And obviously, you'll have physical uh, machines that you're uh, managing as well. How is it being used? Well, you have uh, business functions that is using this IT. You have uh, business services that uh, wrap around all of this IT, uh, maybe multiple applications collaborating to create some kind of service. You have... Um, uh, Sorry, yep. Uh, uh, then you also have uh, how big is it? So uh, is it, uh, how big is the storage that's being used for that IT? Uh, what CPU cores uh, underlie the hardware that's running those applications? Because that becomes important for calculating uh, usage-based licensing. Um, and, and what other compute resources and network infrastructure uh, goes around uh, to make how big that uh, application is. And when you bring all of this together, it quite often adds many more questions. Is it being used? Uh, 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 does it come from uh, what's it? Well, rather, what's the hosting region that's used for that application? Uh, does it have enterprise uh, benefits that apply to that? Uh, those applications? Is it reserved or a pay as you go application? With where is it? Is it soft or hard partitioning that applies? to the applications running on that infrastructure. Again, bring your own license or is it platform as a service? Um, is it containerized? 
How's it being used? Is it in development, production? Uh, is it a test environment that you're um, being able to look at through asset management and then the appropriate costs that go with that? And likewise, um, is it, uh, you know, what, what's the sizing? Is it passive cores, active cores? Um, is there auto scaling involved in running the application? And so this overall brings together a lot of complexity that you have to look at, manage, and then you have to imagine that this is being done for potentially thousands of applications in your organization. And so what Flexera One does is it tries to offer answers to all of these aspects of your IT. And so with that in mind, what Flexera One does is it offers visibility to your IT infrastructure. It looks at providing you all the information about what business services, technology, and so forth that you have. And that will then inform you about what IT uh, assets you have and, and so forth. And then the next level is that you can then transform that IT using automation, using Flexera's um, libraries and so forth that allow you to sort of enrich and, and understand that information. Certain levels of automation like license optimization and so forth can be applied to that. And this can be done not only in your on-prem and private cloud uh, management envi uh, asset environments. You could do this for software as a service as well as uh, a lot of cloud management capabilities from cloud migration of taking on-premises solutions and bringing them to the cloud as well as optimizing the cost and utilization of resources in the cloud as well. So the architecture of Flexera One is a SaaS offering. Uh, it's broken up into these components, which uh, you can use uh, separately or together. There's the IT visibility piece that gives you that visibility. There's the IT asset management for software asset management, uh, SaaS and hardware asset management. And then there's the cloud management side of things. All of this has a common unified uh, dashboarding, in particular spend. And there is an underlying policy engine that can orchestrate um, automation, as well as uh, a unified discovery and normalization processing at the bottom to actually get information into uh, the platform. So one area of the platform that we will concentrate on is this IT asset management piece, because that's the piece that uh, is very specific towards um, this integration between Flexera One and uh, Turbonomic. Sorry, so my slides are missing a little bit here and there, it seems, but uh, I'll continue on regardless. Um, so with software license optimization with using Flexera ITAM, the first thing that we do is we try and get that information about your organization into the platform uh, related to your computers, your laptops, your desktops, your your clouds and so forth. And we have a normalization engine that can then recognize the software and hardware that is on those platforms and apply uh, Flexera's Technopedia catalog to understand that information. Uh, to get that information into a SaaS solution, we do have an on-prem components, one part being uh, an inventory beacon that can uh, integrate with your existing inventory solutions like SCCM, BMC, Discovery, and so forth. And it'll also uh, link up with what our own agents, which you can deploy into your environment to gather this kind of information. And then we also have direct cloud-to-cloud -cloud integrations with things like ServiceNow and, and the various platforms as a service clouds. On the other side of the fence, we have um, purchases and contracts that can be imported into the uh, Flexera One platform. And from here, we can then use other libraries, uh, the, the software um, keeping unit and uh, stock keeping unit and product use rights libraries to understand what those purchases are actually for. And in particular, use those to create software licenses um, that can then match up to the software that we know about uh, from, from your imports. And bringing those two things together, we can then understand the license position that you have based on the assets that you have on the left and the purchases you've made on the right. So we'll go into a demo uh, at this point just to show off some of these uh, components. If we could swap to the demo, uh, please. Fantastic. 
And so here's Flex Error 1. Um, and the first thing we will look at is um, that problem of getting software into your system. So we can go down to all inventory and we can get a list of all of the computers that are within your organization. And in particular, we're going to be looking for a particular computer, um, which is a, a virtualization host. Let me just uh, grab its name. Over here. So this VM host 004646. We can drill into that, and from here we can see that uh, Technopedia has recognized the hardware on this platform. Uh, it's a Cisco server. Um, we can go across to uh, the Evidences tab here, and we can see that this is actually an ESX server. And furthermore, we can go to the virtual machines, and we can see that list of virtual machines. And for this, we're going to look at a specific virtual machine on this virtualization host. So let's search for that one and we can drill into it. And this one we can see, um, it is a, a VMware platform virtual machine. It has four vCPUs allocated to it. We can see the raw evidence that's being captured for this virtual machine. And we can see how that raw evidence has turned into applications which are recognized as running on that virtualization host. Uh, the, that list of applications is then uh, listed out here. And of interest here is that we do have a Windows Server running on here. We also have um, a SQL Server running on here. And we can look at the licenses. Uh, sorry. Look at the licenses here. Um, there we go. And again, we can see that there is this SQL Server Enterprise Core license that has been allocated to this virtual machine to cover off that installation of SQL Server 2005 Standard Edition. So let's switch across to uh, software licenses at this point. Oh, sorry, let's switch first of all to purchases. So the other side of the puzzle we said before was procurement, and we can look at all of the purchases that have been made. And in particular, we're interested in SQL Server at this point. And so there we can see that there is actually two purchases for SQL Server Standard Core. Uh, and our part of that has been that when we've introduced these, there has been a, a part number or a SKU that's been entered. And that SKU is used in the Flexera libraries to look up all of this detail about that particular uh, purchase that you've made for the SQL Server Core licenses. And we can see that we've actually got a couple of those purchases uh, right there. Now, those purchases can be used to create a license. If we uh, drill into one of these, we will, in fact, see that uh, there is a license over here, which has been, um, in fact, created using that SKU and that purchase. So let's hop across to licenses, which is the other part of that right-hand side. And we can get a list of all the software licenses under management within the organization. And again, let's very specifically look for this SQL uh, server license that we've been clicking on. And uh, here it is over here, this SQL Server Enterprise Core with Software Assurance. You can also see, by the way, it's at risk, which is a little bit interesting. Um, let's have a look at what that's about. So we can first of all, yes, see it is at risk. Um, but how do we get here? So uh, looking at the use rights and rules that are applied to this license, these use rights and rules relate to things like, can you upgrade or downgrade to different versions of the software that's related to this license? Um, there are other use rights around how it's used in uh, public clouds, how it is licensed on virtualization environments, whether there's mobility rights for using that license across um, multiple computers and so forth. Um, 
from the use rights, we do have the applications that are uh, covered by this particular license. So there will be a, a license, a, a piece of software, in this case, SQL Server 2017. But remember, we were actually looking at 2005. The use rights say, well, we can downgrade the version that's being used. So in actual fact, all of these versions of SQL Server are being covered by this uh, license because of those downgrade rights. Now, we can go further and look at the um, consumption of this license and see what devices are actually being uh, covered by this particular license. And again, scrolling through this list, we can see various clusters, virtualization hosts, and virtual machines. And, and scrolling through here, we would find our uh, um, virtualization host and virtual machine that uh, we were looking at before. We'll also see if we get to the bottom of this that we are consuming 184 uh, licenses. And remember that we had some purchases on this license. We look at the purchases tab. We can see those two purchases. Uh, we purchased 80 plus 70, which gives us 150 purchases and 148, 84 consumption. And so again, if we go back to compliance, we've said we're at risk. And we scroll down here, we can see those entitlements that were purchased, 150. We can see the 184 consumed below all that virtualization. And so we do have a shortfall here of, of 34 uh, licenses. So that's your um, IT uh, asset management software license optimization. As I said before, we get that information, we bring it into that all inventory, we bring the purchases in, we use that for automation to create these software licenses. Uh, we also have other capabilities in the platform overall that I briefly mentioned. We have uh, this idea of uh, IT visibility, and here's an example of the dashboard that can be accessed um, from the IT visibility uh, dashboard here. Uh, we can see that we have quite a diverse number of manufacturers that we're managing and products. If we scroll down, we can, we can see a, a lovely graph of those. Scrolling down further, we can actually look for the database management systems that we have. We can look at relational databases and drill into that to see, okay, what are we dealing with with relational databases? And again, we can see we've got 21 different database products with 11 different manufacturers and quite a large number of versions of those products that we're having to deal with. We can see uh, MySQL is involved, SQLite, uh, again, before we were interested in SQL Server, and in this particular demo environment, we can see that there's a large number of different SQL Server versions that we have deployed. Um, let me just zoom out a little bit. Hopefully, it won't be too small for you, um, because uh, we want to uh, be able to see the, the counts on the right-hand side here, and that will show us exactly how many uh, installations we have of each. And into those counts, we can drill in um, to understand more about uh, what machines have that software. And again, we can see our um, virtual machines down here. Um, uh, that one there, which was our 407040, which was the one we were looking at before. We can see the hardware details for that virtual machine here. And furthermore, we can drill into that particular computer and we can see all of the software assets uh, on this computer. So we can see all of the inst installed software on that computer, including where we started, which was that uh, SQL Server instance. Also uh, part of the platform is uh, software as a service uh, management. We integrate with various uh, cloud SaaS offerings and are able to retrieve uh, a lot of information from those, including how much you're spending, who's using it, look for suspicious users and so forth. And finally, we have uh, these cloud integrations. So in particular, we can do sort of cost analysis of uh, various clouds that you might be using, uh, Amazon, Google Cloud or um, AWS, uh, sorry, uh, Azure, Microsoft Azure. And uh, we can help not only manage the costs, we can find ways that uh, you can find things like uh, unattached virtual volumes that you might be able to clean up. 
and we have a policy and automation engine that can automate that. So again, uh, the main part that we're interested though in is this software license optimization with software properties. It's this uh, licensing information that we supply to Turbonomic and Turbonomic then does its magic. And so now let's hand over to those guys to talk about how that Turbonomic piece works and how uh, this software license optimization uh, piece is used to, to make one plus one equals three. Thanks, Tim. Um, before we do that, there are a couple questions about uh, Flexera. Um, one of them is a question for me, uh, which is what types of licenses are supported by the Flexera license management? Fantastic question, Max. Um, so the overall platform does support a, a, a really large and rich variety of licenses. We have um, IBM PBU licensing, which is uh, a license model that actually has to calculate peak utilization of software on CPU cores. So it's actually quite a tricky one to calculate. And uh, we have the capability of, of not only monitoring when peaks occur, but evaluating what that peak is and being able to supply that information back to IBM to cover your PBU licensing. We also deal with Oracle software licensing and its complexities around CPU cores and clustering. We have simple things like just device licensing, user-based licensing, and that user-based licensing could be for both applications that you have direct access to on your computers, but they could also be virtual applications through Citrix or other application virtualization platforms. We can look at how uh, what software people have access to and try and get that correct license position for those utilizations. So there are a large number of um, types of software licenses and a lot of complexity that underlies those with the information that's gathered to cover those scenarios that the Flexera One platform does a really great job of being able to manage. That's great. Uh, we do have another question. Um, it is, what is Flexera's strategy for the CMP or cloud management platform product? That's an awesome question. Um, Cloud Management Platform uh, was a, a product that was well and truly ahead of its time in its early days. Um, it does a fantastic job of being able to automate the um, delivery of things like virtual machines and uh, templates and so forth into all the various clouds through a single portal. Uh, these days, a lot of uh, open source technologies like Terraform uh, and even the platforms themselves uh, have capabilities of doing what the cloud management platform uh, was once the star at doing. So cloud management platform is not an area that we concentrate on so much. Some of the underlying technologies that it had, we are reusing in order to do the cost management and some of the automation. But as a, a product, unfortunately, cloud management platform uh, has kind of been overtaken by uh, some other cool technologies that are in the uh, ecosystem now. Great. One more question that we'll answer, and then we'll answer the rest of the Flexera questions at the end. Uh, this one is, can Flexera be integrated with Instana to get the same information from Flexera? <laughs> Another great question. Uh, back when we started this integration, we actually looked at both Instana and Turbonomic. Uh, at the time, uh, we found that starting with Turbonomic was perhaps a, a nicer story um, to, to really kick things off. And you'll see in a minute why that might be, because the um, Turbonomic is the thing that gives you automation, and uh, we can apply that automation uh, with information from Flexera. So the, the Turbonomic integration was our first point of call, our first priority, but Instana is something that we have been discussing, particularly the fact that it can do application mappings and be able to um, model um, application stacks or, or business uh, applications as well. So it, it's certainly something that we have in our mind, but for now it's just Terminonic and uh, stay tuned and see where we go. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, let's move on to the IBM Terminonic part of it. So here we've got Anshman and, and Robert to introduce us to IBM Terminonic and the Flexera integration. Yeah, absolutely. Before Anshman gets started, um, I did want to mention that the integration with Flexera, 
um, is a huge benefit for Turbonomic as well. The, the deep knowledge, the expertise they have about software licensing makes everything that Turbonomic does better. It makes it safer. It makes it more friendly. It makes it more helpful. So for us, this is a, a really great way to take advantage of the fact that the Flexera team has spent literally years learning about studying all the various types of software licenses. And we can now start to take advantage of that in Turbonomic. And Edgeman's going to walk us through how exactly that's going to work. Thanks, Robert. Can we get the slides? <clears throat> Thank you. So hi, everyone. My name is Anshuman Biswas. I'm an engineering manager at Turbonomic. Um, so welcome to the section of the workshop where Robert Clark and I attempt to talk about how IBM and Flexera are better together because of the integration that our teams have built. So as Tim has already covered uh, many of the features offered by Flexera, I won't kind of go into details uh, for Flexera, but for this discussion, we want to focus on the fact that Flexera manages licenses for hybrid cloud and multi-vendor environments. And in fact, Flexera can be used to replace the IBM license metric tool. So with this new partnership with Flexera, IBM hopes to leverage the license compliance information offered by Flexera. Additionally, the resource optimization capabilities of Trebonomic to automate the customer's environment go hand in hand with the license management feature offered by Flexera. And as we will find out in this workshop, by recommending safe automation actions to our customers. So in our industry, we're always looking for ways to optimize our IT resources. We're challenged with choosing between optimizing for license and optimizing for performance. Each one has implications for the other, and without an holistic approach, we must choose where to focus our efforts on. We can apply software asset management to understand where licenses are deployed, how software is being used, what versions of software are deployed, and ensure compliance with software licensing. Or we can apply application resource management techniques to understand resource requirements to optimize based on application performance. Each approach yields substantial benefits, yet when we kind of try to do this in isolation, the benefits disappear. In fact, optimizing with incomplete or inaccurate licensing data can be downright dangerous. Hence, by combining licensing data from Flexera, Trebonomic can optimize for licensing as well as performance. <clears throat> so this presents a 10,000 foot overview of the capabilities of the two products. Flexera is a leader in asset management, as explained by Tim. Uh, and Flexera One is their SaaS-based IT management solution, which is designed with and for organizations with highly complex hybrid environments. Trebonomic, on the other hand, is an application resource optimization platform. Application runs, run businesses and application performance is generally critical for a business's success. But as the complexity of applications rapidly increases, it is getting much harder to manage application resources deployed across multiple cloud infrastructure. Uh, Trebonomic integrates with APM solutions along with a host of other technologies. One of the powers of Trebonomic is that we get visibility into everything from the application running on a container, which is running on a VM, that runs on a host in a cluster supported by various storage solutions. So by automating the optimization for both physical and virtual software licenses, customers can break down the boundaries between clusters and freely move individual resources between their different clusters. And with the data from Flexera 1 utilized by Turbonomic, customers can confidently optimize without risking operational impact or putting resources out of compliance with their software licenses. With Flexera 1 information, automation for performance with Turbo is now safe. Before, users were at risk of violating licenses and exposing customers to significant liability. With this integration, however, it is much easier and safer to optimize the customer's environment. So this slide presents the capabilities of Turbonomic as a platform. Turbonomic provides full visibility of the application stack, works with priorities that are driven by the application, and analyzes the complete environment to provide actions that address performance, efficiency, and compliance requirements in a holistic way. These are not the only things that Turbonomic can do, of course. For example, 
Turbonomic can suggest optimizations for cloud-based resources by looking at resource utilization and also by looking at existing reserved instances. Turbonomic is also not just limited to looking at application-driven views. Turbonomic supports multiple hypervisors and storage systems in order to provide full stack visibility. So these are some of the key operations every IT ops team must perform. Turbonomic observes by discovering the different resources belonging to a customer's on-prem or cloud deployment offerings. Uh, these are the three key elements of observability, as you can see here. And the items in green are covered by Turbonomic, and the item in orange um, is supported by the rest of the IBM automation product set. Turbonomic also analyzes the full topology while ensuring performance and efficiency in a compliant manner. And finally, Turbonomic remedies in the form of actions to get environments in a globally healthy state. So this integration has two major use cases. First off, Turbonomic, after understanding the licensing data that is being provided by Flexera, can generate actions which are both compliant with the licensing constraints and that have been established by Flexera before. So there are many more opportunities to extend this better together story. In a future release, Trebonomic will be able to generate actions to adjust the physical and virtual licenses as per the application demand. Uh, but the benefits so far of this integration are that we can avoid surprise true ops from the license vendors, we can optimize the environment safely in a compliant manner, and we can reduce costs and eliminate unnecessary spends. All right, so this is the integration workflow, um, and let's dive into it to understand um, how the user interacts with the different systems. So there are three main categories of stakeholders in this integration, the user, Flexera, and Turbonomic. The user would set up Flexera to be the record of truth for their software asset management. At this point, Flexera would collect the licensing data from the customer's environment and make it available by its APIs, as Tim kind of showed. So Turbonomic would consume this licensing data from Flexera and create groups and automation policies. Next, the user may want to set up their own policies in accordance with their business rules. And why would they want to do that? For example, uh, imagine a scenario where Flexera and Turbonomic uh, will keep a SQL Server on license host automatically, because that's what Flexera has uh, told Turbonomic. However, your business may demand that old versions of SQL Server only run on older hosts which is a reasonable policy that the business may have. Um, now, this point of distinction between license compliance and business policy compliance, both of which have to be adhered by Turbonomic, is something that Turbonomic can do and does. Um, so as you can see, we have Turbonomic getting the policies and the groups created by Flexera, as well as by the user uh, policies that have been defined by the user, the business policies. Uh, finally, once all these policies have been understood by Turbonomic, Turbonomic will enforce the software asset management placement and scaling constraints, which will lead to the customer uh, avoiding surprise true ups from comp compliance violations. Also, uh, Turbonomic, once it automates optimization of physical and software licensing allocation, uh, then the user will save on optimized license spends because Turbonomic will be able to identify any licensing gaps where uh, the customer is using more than the licenses or it's using less licenses than it has allocated, and that'll help save money. So this is the general workflow of how a user will use this integration, um, and we'll give you more concrete examples in a few slides. Right. So next, I want to present two scenarios. The first one deals with placing VMs into correct hosts so that the performance is guaranteed while also enforcing licensing restrictions to avoid surprise true ups. Uh, the second scenario it deals with core based licensing, which we'll come to a little later. And it supports, um, and Turbonomics supports core based licensing as well as host based licensing um, as it gets the data from Flexera. So in this first scenario, we have eight SQL VMs, which have about eight vCPUs each. And we have uh, eight Windows VMs with about eight vCPUs each. 
And for context, the customer has eight ESXi physical host servers with eight ESXi licenses that have 32 physical cores each. So let's look at the current scenario. So this is what the customer has today. Uh, he has eight servers. We're only so showing four of these servers here. And these four servers uh, is in one cluster, which is um, only having SQL VMs. So it has four physical servers. It has four ESXi licenses. Uh, each of the servers has 32 core licenses. So totally, uh, this cluster has 128 cores uh, licensed to SQL. Uh, and then it also has 128 cores licensed for Windows. And then we have a second cluster, which is not shown here. But that cluster has, again, four physical servers, four ESXi licenses, and it has 128 cores licensed for Windows. So in total, we have 16 VMs. Um, and, and you might be wondering why a customer would do that, but this is quite typical. Uh, this is probably not the most efficient way to set up an environment, but customers without Flexera and Trevonomic have to do this kind of over-provisioning to make sure they don't violate licenses and also ensure performance, because both of them go hand in hand, as we discussed, and without Trevonomic and Flexera, it's very hard, because imagine if a customer has, instead of four, it has 400 servers, it would be very hard for one person or one group to make these computations on the fly. So this is how the setup is. Now let's look at how Trevonomic and Flexera improve this. So the first optimization that we can do is safely allow the non-SQL Windows VMs into the cluster. Why can we do that? It's because the cluster one, the hosts already have the 128 core licensed Windows um, licensing. And that's because all the SQL VMs also need Windows licenses. Um, so what happens there is we can remove all the VMs from the cluster B and move them all to cluster A. And what we save from there is we save the cost of the four physical servers. I mean, if uh, the customer has acquired it, the physical servers may still be there, but you can turn them off. Uh, we definitely save on the licensing cost of the ESXi licenses that th those four servers will require because now they've been shut off. And also we save on 128 core license for the Windows. So that is significant amount of licensing that you can already see that Trevonomic can save when it knows the information from Flexera and it makes these moves safely. So that's the first optimization. Next, what uh, we like imagine in a scenario where now in the previous scenario, you had the whole capacity of the cluster maxed, right? So in this scenario, imagine if the Windows VM exceeds the license host supply, obviously uh, the customer would have to provision a new host and that will be done. So imagine there's host five now, uh, which we've added that has an extra 32 core Windows license. That's fine. And then what Trevonomic will do is it'll recognize there's safe move actions that can be performed, and it'll move a few of the Windows VMs from the other hosts onto host five. So there is some additional cost, but that cost is there to make sure that we can assure performance for the Windows VMs. Um, and again, Turbonomic and Flexera continuously ensure that all the VMs are compliant with their licenses while also ensuring that we get the best performance. So this is the second optimization. Now the third optimization, Imagine in, in this previous scenario that we have a lot of, all these hosts have SQL licenses except for host five, and all of them have Windows licenses. So there is an optimization that Trevonomic can recognize where it can reduce or remove the SQL licenses from host four. How can it do that? So it can move the SQL VM that's on host four, because as you see in a host four, it has one SQL VM. It can move that to host three and then it can move one VM from host three, which is a Windows VM onto host four. So now host four only contains Windows VMs and host three contains only SQL VMs. So in host three, we'll need both the SQL server licenses as well as the Windows licenses. But on host four, we can get rid of the SQL server licenses. So that's definitely an optimization that if Turbonomic recognizes uh, and finds the opportunity, it'll definitely get rid of the licenses and allow the users to save on the licensing costs there. So this is the third optimization. Uh, and that's, um, yeah, here we're just showing the optimization where the Windows VM moves to host four and the SQL Server VM moves to host three. 
And now imagine there's this is the I guess another optimization which we are calling a bonus optimization where imagine if there are non-licensed VMs like Linux VMs that exist, right? There is spare capacity in our cluster. And when Turbonomic recognizes that, well, the license have already been paid for. So I mean we can't optimize the licenses anymore, but we can definitely optimize the performance of the VMs while maintaining efficiency, because efficiency is one of the core pillars of Turbonomic. So to do that, we can maximize the capacity of the cluster by moving in some Linux VMs that um, otherwise would have just remained in a different cluster and wasted the capacity of this cluster. So that's one of the optimizations that are possible. Now you may ask, what happens if SQL demand increases? Obviously, there is no more room to grow. So what Turbonomic will recognize that, and, re and it will try to make a safe action. Instead of moving any of the licensed VMs, like a SQL Server VM or a Windows VM, it'll move one of the non-licensed VMs, like the Linux VM, so that the SQL Server VM that has been identified will be able to scale up once one of the non-licensed VMs moves up. All right, so this was the first scenario. Uh, next, move on, let's move on to the second scenario, which is what if a customer wants to run two SQL VMs using virtual core licensing? In the previous example, we were talking about host licensing. Uh, and in this scenario, we want to dive a little bit deeper into how Turbonomic handles core licensing. So imagine a VM that has 32 vCPUs that's being consumed completely, right? Um, because the license has been allocated for 32 vCPUs. Now, the, in actuality, maybe the VM is totally underutilized and doesn't need 32 vCPUs. However, a customer, again, in this scenario, as in the previous scenario, will be hesitant to move the vCPU and scale it down themselves if they're not sure what the usage is going to be in the future. Uh, and for that, uh, what we can do is, if you look at the next slide, Turbonomic will recommend a move down from 32 vCPUs to 4 vCPUs once it recognizes that there is some room to improve here. Um, so from a, a licensing standpoint, I mean, there's no benefit of going any down, like any lower than four, because uh, Turbonomic understands that the minimum number of licenses that the uh, vCPU uh, licensing can assign to a customer is four. So Turbonomic will recognize that and stop the user at four. However, uh, there may be an optimization opportunity which makes it available to other VMs to use the vCPU cores if Turbonomic recognizes that uh, this VM, for example, needs only two. Uh, so Flexera tells us that the vCore licensing system is at four. Um, so what Turbonomic will do is break this action down into two different actions, where the first action will automate going from 32 vCPU cores to four, which can be done safely and it's compliant with license as well as the performance and efficiency. Uh, but the second action will come up when we're at four vCPUs. And what we can do at that point is offer a manual action to the user to recommend if they want to go from four to two, they can do that. They, it, it won't save anything on the license cost, but it will save something on their performance and efficiency where the performance can be met, the efficiency will be increased, and other VMs can make use of the extra cores on the host. So that's it. There's one extra slide I want to present, and which is for the future. So in our current form of the integration, we support scale downs. For scale ups, so far, we don't have it supported, but it's something that's coming in the very near future. And you can think of it as just the opposite of what I described earlier, where in, imagine a VM has 32 vCPU cores, and the licensing is for 34. And if Turbonomic finds that there is room for the vCPU to kind of be increased because the VM maybe demands it, then we can go up to vC34. Uh, the only thing we have to keep in mind is that the customer needs to already own a higher license allocation count. If we don't own that, that's another improvement in the future maybe where we can request Flexera to A, first get the license from somewhere, and then Turbonomic can do the increase in the vCPU cores. But that's another uh, few you know, features down the road. 
so that's it for the slides. Uh, I want to go into the demo, but before that, maybe I'll pause for some questions. Yeah, we do have a few questions. Uh, first one is a question for me. Uh, so how does Turbonomic handle licenses that are based on usage rather than on licensing an entire host? Robert, do you want to take that? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as you saw in the last couple of slides that Anshman uh, put up, uh, Turbonomic understands how much of the license is used. But right now, we use that to ensure that our performance and our efficiency actions don't violate the license. However, we're not yet optimizing license usage. So for an example, you know, if you uh, license 100 cores for SQL Server, um, Turbonomic will be able to, uh, in its next incarnation, assign those licenses appropriately and size the instances appropriately. So all together, you have 100 CPUs used. Right now, we're making sure that we don't go above the licensing or below the minimum licensing on any virtual uh, machine. So I, I wanted to reinforce that. There is an almost unlimited future for this uh, expansion, more license types, better understanding of licenses, optimization of licenses. Um, what Anshman is going to show you in the demo is the, the first of a long, long list of really amazing functions. Okay. Um, another question we have is, can Turbonomic be deployed without OpenShift on AWS, Azure, et cetera? Is it available as a SaaS deployment? Absolutely. Yes. Um, Turbonomic is right now available as a SaaS. Um, you can also install it uh, without OpenShift. You can use EKS, uh, GKE. Um, you can install it in your own Kubernetes cluster. Um, we also provide uh, a VMware OVA if you don't have a Kubernetes environment set up. And you can drop that into your vCenter and be up and running in about four minutes. And of course, we, you know, we love our friends at IBM. We support OpenShift as a first-class citizen. Of course. <laughs> um, another question is, does Turbonomic support across cloud environments slash multi-cloud environment, or can only be deployed on a single cloud slash hybrid environment? Um, I'll, I'll take that in, in two parts. So Turbonomic absolutely does support multiple cloud environments, AWS, Azure, uh, Google Cloud, and uh, soon uh, IBM Cloud. It doesn't require you to install into those cloud environments, though. So when you do install Turbonomic, we don't install it across uh, multiple cloud environments because we don't have to. You can install it anywhere you want. Uh, you can install it on premises if you would like and monitor as many different cloud environments as you happen to have, along with your data center. And I think the other question you had, um, integrations with um, DevOps tools such as uh, Ansible or Maven, uh, Terraform, not yet, but those are coming soon. However, there is existing functionality in Turbonomic that will allow you to hook up to pretty much anything you want. Um, we're going to roll out web hooks if uh, that's enough for you. And if it's not, we already allow you to use your own script written in whatever language you would like uh, to actually execute these actions. You know, if you want to um, pull together some Python or some Ruby code, to make these changes in your environment or, or you know, invoke a Terraform workflow. Absolutely, Turbonomic can trigger that for you and give you all the information you need to be able to execute these actions. Perfect. So all the other questions we'll leave it till the end of the demo. Uh, so now let's go ahead and dive into that. Cool. All right, thanks, Max, and thank you, Robert. Uh, so let me go over the demo. The demo environment is a very small environment is just to give you a few examples. So before I start, I want to show you how Turbonomic accesses the different information from Flexera. So we have these things called probes. And we have, as you can see, we have a Flexera probe and we have a vCenter probe. And what happens is Turbonomic goes out and discovers information from vCenter. And then it also discovers information from Flexera. And it kind of combines the information to find out that this VM or this host 
was discovered in a vCenter environment, and it has this license requirement. So that's how these two probes are working. Let me quickly do a rediscovery, and that's validated. So next, I want to show you what happens when you when this probe goes out and discovers. What does it discover? So it discovers a few things. First of all, it discovers a few groups. And if I were to type Flexera here, you'll see these are the groups, the different groups that it's discovered. And what's interesting here is each group is a different license type. So you can see we have six virtual machines that have uh, the My MySQL, sorry, the My Microsoft SQL Server 2017 license. And we have one host that has a Windows Server 2016 license. So these are just groups that Turbonomic creates. But what happens with these groups is we use poli or we define policies which can drive actions. So Trevonomic also creates a few policies. Let's go and check those. So here you see Trevonomic has created three placement policies and two automation policies. So if you look at the three placement for policies, and we know these are Flexera policies because uh, of the prefix Flexera. So you'll see that one of these policies is restricting VMs to this host, which needs the license of the Windows Server 2016. So if I go into this, I'll see that the VMs that belong to this group need to be on this host for licensing requirements. And this is some information that the user could have created before manually, but because Flexera is telling us this data and we're polling Flexera every 10 minutes, we get the up-to-date information. We can always be sure that the user is compliant with their licenses. So this is the placement policy. And we also create some automation policies this one is to restrict uh, the vCPU for the SQL Server license to four um, vCPUs. This was one of the examples I was talking about. So with that, let's actually go into, and by the way, um, Max can share some credentials with you, uh, and you can take a look at this environment. This is hosted on an AWS instance, um, and you can actually go in with those credentials. You won't have the full list because it will be a observe um, user account, but you can see the VMs that I'm going to show now. So what I've done is I've created a group, a special group for this demo, which is called a workshop demo. So this is a group that I've created myself for the demo. So you can go here. You'll see there are two virtual machines. So let me go to them one by one. The first one is the workshop demo one. And this one, you'll, you'll see the action, you'll see one action, which is that uh, Trebonomic wants to resize down the VM VMAM for this virtual machine from four to three. That's all well and good. But what's interesting here is there's an action that's missing. If we remove Flexera from our from Turbonomic, this VM will want to move out of this host. As you can see, this host is red. What that means in Turbonomic terms is that this host is under some sort of stress. Let's go to that host. So you can see it has two separate actions. One of them is to move a VM from out of this host to make sure that the pressure of the host kind of stabilizes. Um, and see, if we hadn't involved Flexera in Trebonomic, it would have moved the SQL Server VM out of this host, thereby kind of rendering the VM kind of uh, being non-compliant in its licensing requirements. Uh, the other kind of interesting action you can see is that in, since it realizes that it needs more licensed hosts, it is actually Trebonomic is suggesting to the user that we should provision a similar host with similar licensing to this host. So that's one of the other actions that Trebonomic can recommend. Um, let's go back to our example. There's another VM, and this VM is Workshop Demo 2. So here you'll see that it has two uh, resize down actions. One is for vCPU and one is for vMAM. If you look at its details, you'll find out that it's very underutilized. Its CPU remains at zero or close to zero most of the time. And its VM, vMAM is also about 20, 25%. So that's why Trebonomic recognizes that this VM can be scaled down. And it says we want to scale down the vCPU from four to three and the vMAM from two to one. What's interesting here is the four to three. Now, typically without Flexera, this action would have been automatically 
available to the user. The user could have clicked on this action and executed the action, which as you can see here for the vCPU, this is grayed out. The reason for that is Turbonomic recognizes that there's a license restriction and we can go down a minimum of four. And you can see here, it, it actually shows what the policy is, which is blocking this action. And this is something that is good because the user is aware what the reason is for, so, so it knows that if it wants to, it can go down from four to three and it's gonna not impact performance in any way and it's probably going to help the efficiency of the system. But since the license requirements say that the minimum SQL Server licensing is four, we disable this action. So that's it for the demo. Robert, did you have any comments here? Yeah. Um, actually, I want to put you on the spot. Um, can you go to the, the, the main uh, tab for the on-prem? Um, and let's look at the cluster. Sure. As you can see here, um, the cluster CPU usage, um, pretty low, 19% across the cluster. There is lots of capacity here. 85% um, of memory, we're starting to get a little bit close to the limit, but we're not there yet. We have more room in this capacity. And yet Angevin showed you that Turbonomic is recommending we provision another host. We need more licensed capacity, not just compute, not just memory. So having that information allows us to give you exactly what you need to do to make sure your, your cluster is licensed, it has got the resources it needs, and the resources are efficiently utilized. Without Flexera, um, we would go through and we would move hosts around without regard for whether or not we're violating a license, because we don't know. Flexera makes Turbonomics smarter, and a smarter Turbonomic makes a safer environment. And it means that you can turn on the automation and take an extra long watch. So, um, Anshman, yep. what happens when, and this is me putting you on the spot here, what happens when we have poorly performing applications? We don't see them in the supply chain right now, but you know, what if I've got a, a web server that is uh, struggling? How does Turbonomic deal with that? Well, it looks at the underlying resources. And first of all, if it can prop up the application with its required resources, it'll do that. If not, it'll look at its underlying resources. If it's running on a container or running on a VM, it'll look at those underlying resources and try to prop them up to whatever is required to make sure the application then runs better. And what happens if I just don't have any more capacity? You know, I've, I'm maxed out on memory and CPU on licensing across my entire cluster. How does Turbonomic deal with a situation like that? Well, it recommends that you provision a new host or you need to provision new resources to support the application. Awesome. And finally, uh, you know, we're looking at an on-prem instance here. Um, does this work in the cloud too? Yeah, it does. Uh, I actually have... Actually, no, I don't have any cloud targets, but um, yeah. I mean, if we had any cloud targets um, with the information we have from Flexera, um, I said the most important piece here is to combine the information that we see from our probes. So in this case, maybe if you're in cloud, if you're talking about AWS, as long as we can see a combining um, factor from the cloud provider as well as from Flexera, we'll do the combination and then you'll have the licensing information. So it should work, but um, though there are a lot of combinations, I think our integration so far has been tested thoroughly with on-prem. Fair enough. All right, that was enough, uh, you know, surprise questions for me. Max, did you have any? Um, I, well, I did notice in the comments, uh, someone said they were having some issues logging in with the credentials. Uh, I just tried logging in with one of the credentials and it worked for me. So maybe you input it wrong, uh, whoever did that. Um, other questions? Um, yeah, there's a, there's a question about, uh, let's see. 
This person said, how would the user prevent actions from being executed immediately and instead wait for the execution during some sort of a maintenance window? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, and what Turbonomic has done here is we've introduced schedules that can be associated to the policy. And if a schedule is active, then a user can go and approve the action whenever they want. But the, the action will only be executed when that schedule window kicks in. And also, if an action has been kind of approved maybe a few weeks in advance or a few days in advance, and when the schedule kicks in, the action is no longer relevant, Turbonomic will not execute the action. So it's only when the action has been approved beforehand and the action is still relevant in that schedule maintenance window will Turbonomic go ahead and execute the action. OK. Uh, there is another question that I wanted to come back to, but it is for Tim as it's part of the Flexera. Um, so if we can bring Tim back. Uh, and the question, I want to chime in on it, too. Sure. Um, so the question is, what is the effect on software service if Flexera identifies that a software license has expired? I guess the question there is, uh, what do you mean by expired? I guess a lot of the licenses that Flexera tracks are perpetual licenses. That means that you've purchased a license and that license is valid forever. Um, but there are quite often maintenance contracts that sit on top of that license. And so when you manage your purchases and your contracts, you can set uh, maintenance um, contracts. And, and those maintenance contracts can have, uh, be a, have impact on the use rights for that license. So when a license does expire, um, you can, there are reports within Flex Era 1 that can highlight um, which licenses have expired. And uh, obviously you either need to retire the software at that point if you're not going to maintain it, or um, you, you want to obviously uh, update your contract with uh, a software vendor. How that flows down to um, Turbonomic, uh, I'll leave that to uh, the Turbo guys to answer yeah absolutely and you know once flexera has told us has identified that you know a license is no longer available and that could mean for any number of reasons you know you returned it and got a refund it's expired um you've you know moved it somewhere else and it's no longer available in this environment whatever the reason if the license is no longer available turbonomic immediately recognizes because we're talking to Flexera, who has that information, that we need to take some actions. The first thing we'll do, obviously, is try to get those VMs back onto a licensed host, if at all possible. If there is no more licensed capacity left, then as Anshwin showed you, Turbonomic will recommend that you go get yourself another license or put that license on a host. And I think you saw in, in uh, uh, Tim's demo, there was a, a a bunch of SQL Server licenses, but you'd already exceeded your license capacity, Flexera will tell you that you need to true up your licenses. So Turbonomic can automate it, Flexera can show you, together you know, you're know, you safe and you won't get sued and your CIO will not be knocking on your door telling you that you, you've used up your budget and it's only October. Okay, and we do have another question, which is, what is the impact to the app slash deployment when Flexera One identifies that the license has expired? Does it report it or any reporting mechanisms in place? Um, so, yeah, again, what, I mean, from the, oh, sorry. You, yeah, you go I'll, I'll start first from the Turbonomic side no because we've got a much shorter answer. Um, we'll tell you, you need more license capacity. That's exactly what we'll do. And we'll try and balance your environment to make use of any leftover license capacity you still have. You know, that's what Turbonomic is there for. It's to optimize what you've got. But for reporting, Flexera excels there. And we have uh, both out of the box reports that can report these kinds of things. We also have uh, a very flexible um, custom reporting mechanism where you get to decide you know, maybe you just want to know the licenses that are out of, uh, have expired, or you want to know the devices that are linked to those licenses, or perhaps it's people.
people are using that software that is linked to the licenses. And we have a very flexible reporting infrastructure that allows you to um, bring that visibility up, as well as a dashboarding capability that can allow you to create dashboard items to uh, really highlight those issues uh, earlier before you then drill into those issues. We do also have a license reclamation capability in Flexera 1 as well. So if you do have applications which can be automatically uninstalled, we do have capabilities to push out um, requests through your, particularly with SCCM, push out requests to have that software removed from uh, your environment as well. Perfect, sounds good. Well, thank you, Tim, Anshaman and Robert for this great presentations and, and demos. Um, one more thing that I want to mention before we head off, which is uh, if you're interested in learning more about Flexera, IBM Turbonomic, or the integration between the two, check out a link of, that I'm going to be sharing in the comment sections, which is ibm.biz slash Flexera dash Turbonomic uh, for resource links and related content, as well as a link to the replay of this workshop. Um, for those that are watching Crowdcast, uh, this current article that's being shown is um, the call to action button. If you click the, the button on Crowdcast, it'll take you to this article, which kind of goes over what we talked, <clears throat> excuse me, what we talked about today. And uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you great. so much. Thank you.